He wanted to satisfy himself without the benefit of. So just because I said, I'm not even talking about marriage. I'm saying the benefit of getting to know her. The benefit of spending time. See, see the thing is, so Adney, one thing about marriage, right? A true man of God. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. When you find a good thing, you obtain favor from the Lord. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a God fearing woman, she shall be praised. When a God fearing man meets a God fearing woman, his initial, his, although, yeah, he may look at her beauty, but what attracts a God fearing man, that I'm, I'm going to keep on saying that, I'm going to keep on reiterating that. What attracts a God-fearing man is the spirit of his potential wife. Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Brother Nick, and I'm here with Sister Adney Godin. Sister Godin, how are you doing on this blessed day? I am doing okay, Brother Nick. Um, just a little heavy hearted. Today is uh, three years since we lost my older brother, Gilbert. So, you know, just taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, um, and just, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to... Uh, comfort me at this time and but the most important thing is the assignment of the lord must continue no matter how we feel no matter what we're going through his assignment never takes a back burner to our emotions how are you doing i would say this uh the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak uh this overnight job and you know it's not easy working overnight i got up i got up early this morning I would say uh, somewhere between one thirty and 2.30 o'clock this morning, and I haven't gone to bed since. So uh, Your body's accustomed to being up around those yes, times. Yes, yes, mm. yes. So I tried to sleep. So I, I bought some uh, melatonin um, supplements. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, prayfully, that when I... Yeah, melatonin and, and get, get like... Uh, um, what they call those curtains that blacken out the room? Oh yeah, I have I have dark curtains in in the other yeah. room, but I don't have it in my my main. Yeah, put that in the room because the thing is, it's like your brain is what what is what wakes up. So if your brain is in the dark, it's gonna know it's dark. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Hey, you guys out there, y'all pray for me, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Y'all pray for me that God bless me with something stable, stable schedule, yeah. uh, nine yeah. to five, seven to three thirty. Y'all definitely pray for me. But overall, Adney, I'm I'm just doing good. It's just that my flesh is just uh, my flesh is like, like you need to be going yeah. to bed. But the spirit is like, nope. There's a word from the Lord. <laughs> so, there's a word from the yeah, Lord. There's a word from the Lord. But I'm excited about this episode. Um, this is part two of Dana. That's how you we at first we used to say Dana Dina 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 Dina, Dina, and, Dina yeah. but her name well, is Dana. <laughs> yeah, we were just butchering her, her name, and then he was like, "Oh, I know the, how to pronounce it." It's Dana, so I like that Dana. And uh, part two, part this is actually part two. So part one was with our uh, special guest, Sister Kimberly Hernandez. She did a phenomenal job with that. So Sister Kim, if you're listening to part two, we really we miss you. We're gonna miss you this episode, but you know we know that you probably wanted to be with us, but we you know. I'm sure you had other prior engagements, but I'm excited about part two, Addy, because we was deep in, I mean, diving and delving right into the text of of Genesis 34. And we didn't even read the whole thing, and we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to read a few verses. But we stopped at verse number three, chapter 34, verse three. And I'm going to have you read it from verse number three through verse number five, and, and we'll have a discussion Right. Verse three begins. It says, um, okay, so I'm going to start here because remember the, the message is completely different than most. It says, then he felt okay. a strong attraction. How about this? 
Yeah. How about this? Can you yeah. can you read one through five? Yep. Just for those that, that didn't listen to part one. Yep. We can do that. All right. I'm reading from the Message Bible in chapter 34, and I'm starting at verse one, and it reads, One day, Dana, the daughter of Leah, had, uh, I'm sorry, the daughter Leah had given Jacob went to visit some of the women in the in that country. Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, who was chieftain there, saw her and raped her. Then he felt a strong attraction to Dana, Jacob's daughter. He fell in love with her and wooed her. Shechem went to his father, Hamor, get me the girl for my wife. Verse five, Jacob heard that Shechem had raped his daughter, Dana, but his sons were out in the field with the livestock. So he didn't say anything until they got home. Lord have mercy. You you know, it's a lot going on in these um, first five verses that you just read, Adney. And I don't know when this episode will air or go live, but we're recording this ep- uh, episode. It's October 4th, and we are bringing awareness to domestic violence. This is the month that um, domestic violence awareness uh, month. So uh, this is a form of domestic violence. This is a form of, of abuse, um, sexual abuse. And um, it, it is so fitting, Adney, for the month that we're, we're we're trying to heighten and bring awareness to. But again, like I said, I don't know when this episode go, going to go live. But I know, Adney, I know you was a, a um, you you were victimized. You you were a rape victim. Um, so I, I know you could speak more on that. But what I would do, what I want to talk about, verse number three. Let's start off at verse number three, and we will tiptoe all the way to verse number five. So your by so in my Bible says uh, in verse number three, um, and this is the and I'm going to read three versions. It says the NASB version. I know your verse said attracted. So it says he was deeply attracted to Dana, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the girl and he spoke tenderly to her. So I'm reading another version Bible. This is the Lexham English Bible it says and his soul uh, clung uh, to Dana, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the girl and spoke tenderly uh, to the girl. So now this is the King James Version says, And his soul claved unto Dana and the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto uh, the damsel. Now, the reason why I wanted to read three verses uh, simply because I like how the the King James Version and also the Lexham English Version um, highlighted so and clung. So when I think about so, uh, I think about let, let's just put it in in this way. Uh, the word clung um, is the is the Hebrew definition means the bak, the bak, and it means to cling, to stick, to stay close, uh, cleave. So cleave to join together. So when I think about those words. I think about Genesis chapter 2 and uh, 24, where it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one. So, Adney, I believe, I know I know, Dana was violated by Shechem. Um, Dana was violated by Shechem. But I believe, Adney, that if you notice in verse number 3, after he violated her, he now wanted her. He now uh, had some kind of emotional attraction to her because I believe that they became one. So I say that because we know we know the danger of um, fornication, whether or not it's, whether or not you're you're fornicated or you're married and having sexual relations with your your um, partner. But we know when when those things transpire. You become one, so there becomes a spiritual uh, attraction when it comes to um, that your the individual. Because when you talk about we talk about soul ties, right? His soul clung into that, and when you talk about soul, the soul is the real him, and that's where we get our emotions. That's our intellect. That's our feelings. That's our emotions and our passion. So I believe in verse number three, Adney. There's some soul ties. Uh, that was going in there. Now it's not all the. It's not Dana's Dana's fault. It's uh, Shechem's fault. He 
he wanted, uh, how can I put this? I guess, Adney, you're a female, so you could probably break it down. Because, I mean, this this has happened to you in the past. And I, I'm, you know, and I know this has happened to a relative of mine. Um, I'm going to just speak on behalf of my relatives because she's been delivered from this situation. When she explained her story, uh, when she was uh, violated by uh, a relative, um, this relative, uh, he his soul clung to my sister. He... He uh he he constantly kept thinking about it. And my sister shared shared this how things transpired between um the um the perpetrator and then this was and this was happening under our roof, Adney, and we didn't even not know. But it shows you that when a person has indulged in some kind of sexual activity with a person, that you become one. And I again, like I said, I believe that they became one. Um, when, when I think about it, I, like you said, um, sex is to be, is to be between a husband and a wife. And that is one of the reasons the Lord says it is, uh, a husband should leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Why? Because when they engage in that activity, that is an activity that that allows them to number one be in a state of worship to him because sex is a form of worship, right? And then number two, it is these two people this declaring themselves for each other. When Shechem violated Dana, he didn't give her the opportunity. He didn't court her. He didn't do anything. All he saw. He saw this young girl who didn't look like the people where he was from, and he just had to have her. So he violated her. And in violating her, he became one with her. And in becoming one with her, his flesh, his body, it desired her so much. And he felt like he loved her. Who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Nobody knows. But if you speak to any rape victim, that is the last thing on their mind, is that this person loves me. Mm -mm. If you loved me, you would have done things the right way. You would have sought my hand in marriage. You would have gone to my relative and say, hey, I want to marry your daughter. I would love to spend the rest of my life with her. That's not what happened. What you did was you used your power, your strength, and you violated her in, um, in the worst possible way. Because number one, she's a Hebrew. She is a woman of um, of a different uh, caliber, and here it is. You all are y'all. Y'all are barbarians. <laughs> like you literally displayed your barbaric um, um, uh, beliefs and in, in, in mind by raping her. Like with my situation, when it happened, the the one thing that I I, I always been in it and, 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 and I blamed myself a lot because I was like, maybe I showed this person that I liked them. So they thought it was OK, but that's not OK. Um, and I want to talk to a young girl out there or even a young boy. If you did not invite this person into your space, they have no right to come in and violate you in such a way. That they have no right. I don't care who it is. They have no right. No means no. When you say no, this is not what I want. That's exactly what it means. It means no. We don't know. You know, everyone speculated because they're like, you know, she didn't scream. She didn't yell. We don't know. Nobody was there. None of us from this time was there. All we know is that it says that he raped her. And then raping her. He he took something from her. He took her her innocence. He took her her virtue. He took her purity. I, I my heart bleeds for those women that have been violated and their innocence have been taken because it's a lot to recover from because their first experience is at the hands of a, a rapist. It's violent. There's no love. There's no oh, you know, this is a time for me and my husband to come. To no, this person literally lost something so precious, so beautiful um, at the hands of a violator. So that experience has been ruined for them. So um, I, I, I really, truly, my heart bleeds for those those people who, or those women and even young men who have been violated in that manner. 
You simplify it just for our listeners. Like you said, that that word rape, and it's still it's still uncomfortable for me to even talk about it. Just just the thought of of a man um, taking advantage of of this uh, woman. You know, you talk about here's one. You know, she's a Hebrew, and he's just a, a Canaanite. He's living in the land of of Canaan. And uh, actually, he's a Hivite. Well, actually, he lives in the land of Canaan. But even the the thought of rape, you know, violated her in that way. And I like how you pointed out, Adney, that he did things backwards. He was sick. How are you gonna you gonna <laughs> how are you gonna see a, a young lady? You notice her. You walk up to her. You violate her after you don't take. To, you know, taking her innocence, you're going to say, oh, I love you now. That's that's a sick individual mentally. That's that's a person that's not, uh, don't have all the bells and the whistles connecting up there. That, that's just, that's just sickening to me. And that's why it's kind of, uh, it's, it's difficult for me just to even have this conversation. But I know that this is a real thing that's happening, you know, today in this world uh, where there are uh, women that are being violated uh, by men and women, and there are young men and men that are being violated by um, by women and men. So we know that this is something that that is ongoing, and this this thing must stop. And we see we see the sinful nature of man, and um, man, and it's it's just so sad. But let's let's just go on to the next verse, and we know that he did things out of order because he raped her. Then on top of that, he loved her. And look at verse number four. So my Bible says, so Shechem said to his dad, Hamar, um, get this girl for me as a wife. So now he wants to marry her. <laughs> and yeah, I guess from a female perspective, uh, I want to hear your thoughts uh, on this one here. Because I, I know because I can't relate how a female may be going through e- emotionally in terms of if a person violate them and then to do like, Hey, you know, I just want to, I just want to, um, I'm, I want to marry you now. What are your thoughts? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Um, there was a movie I watched back in the, I want to say it was in the late 90s. And the man, the young lady was coming from work. He He pushed her from behind, raped her. And impregnated her. And then, (laughs) as sickening as it is, he pursued her. And then he ended up marrying her. And then marrying her, the baby's born. Baby grows up. Baby gets sick. And the baby needs a kidney. Mom is not a match, but dad is a perfect match. Why am I bringing this up? The mom found out because the dad was a perfect match that he was the man that raped her because she never saw his face. What happens to the young woman who is violated and is raped? And she's impregnated. Fortunately, that was not Dinah's story. But again, like we said, because of, of, we don't know how long he's been watching Dinah, right? We, again, we, we're, we're, we're reading the scriptures. We don't know the timeline. We don't know if this is their first encounter. We don't know. But even 
feel as a woman? How in the world would I want to marry the man that violated and took something so precious to me? Like you didn't even see me as a woman. If you notice, he, he says, take the damsel for me to wife. At that time, that's not what you saw. You just saw something or I'm sorry, I'm saying something because she wasn't a human being to you. Because had she been a human being, you wouldn't have gone and violated her in that way. She was just a piece of property or something that you saw that you wanted to conquer and you conquered her. And then after the fact, you want to say, oh, I want to marry her now. For me as a woman, I'm sorry to say, I've been like, hell no. <laughs> nope, absolutely not. I will not marry him. He took something from me. He didn't even see me as a woman. He didn't see my purity. He didn't see, um, he didn't even, he didn't see her you understand what I'm saying like a lot of times when if you ask a man before he married his wife there is something he saw in her that made him say this is going to be my wife he didn't violate her he pursued her in a way that is chaste he pursued her in a way that is respectful right but Shechem did not do that so what woman in her right mind would want to marry her rapist I don't know of any not one not one because you got to think about the trauma right so so you violate me traumatic then you want to go to your daddy and say you want to marry the damsel now you see me as a damsel now you see that oh snap she was pure because um, I, I wanted to look up the word damsel so I could share what it um, what what it means. I couldn't find it, but I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna share it, right? But you say take take the damsel for me, right? And then and you telling your dad and your dad who's ten times worse than you doesn't even say no. That's not how we're gonna do things. You know, we we have to do things decently and in order. And, um, and, 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 and yeah, it, it's, it's just sickening. That's all I could say. That that's just sickening to me. It's sickening to me. It is. Um, and I'm, I want to put it in modern terms. So I'm going to say a couple of things, uh, based on, on what we're reading about Shechem. So, uh, first, firstly, uh, Shechem was, uh, more concerned about taking care of his fleshly desire. You know, that's fleshly. Because, you know, we have, there's three components of man. There's flesh, spirit, and soul. So uh, Shechem was more concerned about his flesh, about satisfying himself. And 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 we know Adney, he's, there's no spiritual background. Shechem does not have a spiritual background. What we do know that he's a Hivite uh, that live in the land of Canaan. So what we do know about the folks that live in Canaan, um, besides the Hebrews, that these other individuals, these ites, we call them the ites, y'all, <laughs> that they uh, worship other gods. They're into other gods. So they do not honor the one true God, Yahweh. They do not honor him. So when you don't honor the one true God, and you honoring or worshiping the little G gods, we know that there's no there's no good morals. You know the the things that they do is uh, unethical, and it's not morally correct. It's going to always be an opposition to the things that's of the spiritual realm. So if we put it in modern term, Adney, he wanted um, in the beginning. This this is when he first met her. He wanted the pleasure with, without the benefits. He he wanted, yeah, he wanted the pleasure. He wanted to satisfy himself without the benefit of, so just because I said, I'm not even talking about marriage. I'm saying the benefit of getting to know her, mm, yeah. the benefit of spending time. See, see the thing is, so Adney, one thing about marriage, right? A true man of God, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. When you find a good thing, you obtain favor from the Lord. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a God fearing woman, she shall be praised. When a God fearing man meets a God fearing woman, 
his initial, his, although, yeah, he may look at her beauty, but what attracts a God-fearing man, that I'm, I'm going to keep on saying that, I'm going to keep on reiterating that, what attracts a God-fearing man is the spirit of his potential wife. That's what attracts that, and, and it goes both ways. So it's not only one-sided. A godly woman, if she, she happened to meet a godly man, she's going to feel his spirit. Yeah, he may be tall. Well, I don't know why people say tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> can he be short for? Can he be short for a change? Can he be five seven, Addy? <laughs> In all honesty, I think it's it's the character of the man that women. Well, for, for let me so let me say it this way: for me, back in the day, light skin, pretty eyes, right? Now it's like being nurtured by the Word of God. I, exactly. I, I appreciate a man who too is being nurtured by the word of God. Exactly. Which means yes. That we are both um, seeking God first in all things, right? And in understanding that when I meet my potential mate or when he meets me, it's like God will whisper in his, both of our ears and says, okay, this is the person, <laughs> right? Um, like, it, it's like your spirit, the spirit of God draws you to each other. And in the drawing to each other, you know, you get to know that person. You get to um, spend time with that person. You get groups of people together so you won't be in compromising situations because you want to protect each other's virtue. And then, you know, you say, okay, you know what? We want to take this a little further. So here comes the engagement, right? This man goes and picks out the, the most beautiful ring that he can find because he feels like she's deserving of it. And then he plans this whole thing, you know, maybe he plans a whole thing or maybe he just takes her to dinner and says, hey, you know what? I just cannot see myself um, without you in my future. So I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Right. And then she says, oh, my gosh, yes. Yes, I was waiting for this to happen. And then, you know, they get engaged and then they can get engaged probably and say, OK, we're going to wait a whole year or they're like, nah, look we want this thing to happen real quick. So let's just go ahead and go to the courthouse and get this thing done, get married. So that way we can already start our lives together and everybody else will do a reception for them. Who knows, whatever the case may be, but at least there is a process that takes place and it is God that is, that is in the forefront of this relationship. With Shechem, it was straight up demonic, okay? He led with his flesh, and with the flesh, he went and he violated this young woman. So let me talk to a rapist right now. Let me speak to a pedophile right now. Let me speak to that person that is violating somebody's child right now, that husband who married a woman who has a teenage daughter or a little girl or a little boy, and you purposely... Um, purposefully pick this woman out because you know she's a single mom and she works and you know that you will be there. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you for looking at a woman and desiring her to the point where you're not man enough. Cause I'm sorry, this is, and it may sound harsh in me saying this, you're not man enough to approach this woman to say, Hey, I would love to take you out on a dinner and just to see where this goes. But no, you allow the enemy to enter into your heart and you violate this woman and take something from her, whether she's a virgin or whether she's already sexually active. That is not your place to go and violate her in such a way. Shame on you, on this pedophile that looks at a little girl or a little boy and says that you want them in such a manner. Shame on you. You need help. Number one, you need Jesus. And number two, you need a therapist. Because it is not right that these poor children are being ruined. Their lives are being turned upside down. They're losing self-worth and self-identity because somebody took away something so precious to them. That woman who was violated has no trust for men. She may have met the man that she was to marry, but because of that, her being violated, she can't even open herself up to him. Shame on you. 
because it is not right. It is not right for you to think in your mind that it is okay for you to approach someone and just take from them because you think you have the power to do so. And that is to the politicians, that is to the cops that think that they have the right to do that. I'm talking to you too, because yes, if we look at the statistics, a lot of times men in power are the main ones that are performing these type of acts. And that's what Shechem showed because he was a Hivite prince he thought he had the right to violate Dana. Shame on you. And you need help. And I pray, I pray that you are man enough to go to God and repent. And that you are smart enough to seek the right therapist. And if you are the man that was violated and you became a violator, again, shame on you. Because it is your job. Your healing is your responsibility. Your healing is your job. Seek the proper help that you need to heal from that. Because no one's life deserves to be turned topsy-turvy because you could not control yourself or you chose not to control yourself. Yeah, that was very profound. Very, very profound. And I thank you for sharing those words to somebody that may be going through it even at this time while they're listening to this episode. But Adney, I, I want to go in a different direction with verse number four, and then we're going to um, skip over to verse number five. So um, as you mentioned, uh, the spirit of Shechem uh, was uh, demonic. Um, it, it is not, um, it wasn't a spirit uh, from God um, by way of just taking advantage of uh, Dana. Uh, but I want to go in a different direction. So there are, there are men, and I want to put it in a modern term. Um, it's not more so uh, rape, but there are a lot of men that exploit um, and uh, a lot of women out there, as as you mentioned. Uh, whereas uh, in Shechem's case, Shechem's, uh, yes, he raped Dana, and then he went to his father and he wanted to wife her. But what I wanted to say, what I, what I, what I meant by I want to go in a different direction, whereas there are men that, that um, have multiple women in modern time. Guys have multiple women and what they want to do to them, they want to play as though they love them, like as though they're going to marry them. But it's kind of like what I said earlier. They want the, the, they want the, the pleasure, but they don't want the benefit of getting to know that sister. They don't want the benefit of even marrying that sister. They just want to just simply just open her legs. I mean, I know it's two ways. Women got to have uh, Self worth and look at, look at themselves in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm not gonna let this guy take advantage of me because that's a form of taking advantage of. I mean, because dudes, um, and, and we know that there are more women than men in this country, in the world. There's more women everywhere, more women at the jobs, more women in college, more women in just pretty much everywhere. And though Lord knows, don't go to the mall, you're gonna see a number of women. But guys, there's more guys in jail or either dead. So there are guys out there that will manipulate uh, women. Um, they would they would trick them into thinking that they're the only one. So as a result, they will exploit them. They'll sleep with them, and they'll say, "You know what? I wanted to test the waters before I marry you." Because there are men like that. They say, "I would not marry you until I see what I, what you're working with." So I'm talking to those men that that have the the spirit of Shechem, that that they got to repent, they got to repent, and the reason why I say it work both ways because I believe that women got to have self worth, got to look at themselves and say, you know what, I'm worthy. I, I I know they need to start saying Jesus Christ is my boyfriend. And when I was in the world, I used to encounter women, uh, and I used to try to talk to them. It was certain women I used to talk to. They'd be like, I got a boyfriend. I'm like, who your boyfriend? What's your boyfriend name? And they're like, Jesus. Adney, don't you know that word Jesus used to scare the demons? <laughs> that word Jesus used to scare the demons out of me. And I used to flee for their life. So I think women got to have like, like a lot of self-worth and say, you know what? I'm not going to let a guy take advantage of me, try to sway me or try to talk to me any kind of way just so he could get me in bed. I know, yeah, we're talking about deny or deny how deny got raped, but I'm talking about the spirit of Shechem, of having... You you wanting a, a male wanting pleasure without the benefits. So let's just go ahead and skip over to verse number five, 
Adney, reading your version again. In verse number five, it says, Jacob heard that Shechem had raped his daughter, Danah, but his sons were out in the fields with their livestock, so he didn't say anything until they got home. Mm. I'm going to try my hardest not to talk about Jacob. So it's talking about Jacob. He heard what happened to his daughter. How in the word, the Bible, in my version says that uh, Danah was, we we kept on saying violated, violated, but they used the term defiled. She, de, you know, she was defiled by uh, Shechem and um, Jacob didn't say a word. <laughs> wow. So Jacob didn't say a word. So this is the, Adney, I, I was going to try my hardest not to talk about Jacob, but since he's in this passage, we got to talk about the leader. So, so Adney, this is what I'm getting out of this, right? And I, I want to try to put it in modern term, modern term. And I want to go back. I'm going to go back in the future or is it back to? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the future, back to what happened to my my sister in the house. So um, my sister, when she was violated, um, she she told adults. I think she told a couple adults, but the adults, they kept silent. And it's very ironic that the Bible has an adult. He heard what happened to his daughter, how she got violated, and he didn't say a word. Adney, don't you know there are single mothers that have daughters that know that their daughter is being violated and they keep in silent? Same thing. The son may be getting violated. And an adult parent in the house is keeping silent. So there is nothing new under the sun. We see it right here in this text where an adult Jacob, his daughter, being defiled, and he didn't say a word. Now, y'all got to go ahead and read the whole chapter for yourself. But this is a real thing. And this is why we're we're kind of like bringing awareness to it. And I mentioned how this is the October, the month of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we're highlighting all kind of abuse, <laughs> sexual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. And we could capture this right here where this is a form of abuse that's going on and nobody is speaking on it. Now, there's going to be revenge, but we're, I'm talking about the adult. I'm, te- I'm talking about the leader that's supposed to take ownership and take responsibility. And he ought to um, show justice for what transpired with his daughter. But he just kept silent. He didn't say a word. I want to talk to the mom because <clears throat> you always know I have something to say. I have a little, I, I, at the time, I refused to date while my daughter was young. And if I dated, they were never allowed to come around my child. The same thing happened when my son was born. I refused to bring anybody around them because number one, I knew what happened to me. And number two, I knew what was going on in the world. I said, as parents, if we do not understand that God blessed our wombs, as mothers blessed our wombs, as fathers, our seed to give birth to these children, and we are to be their protector, we are to be their provider, and we are to steward them well, shame on us. I remember telling my aunt that I was being felt on by a relative. And my aunt told me I was lying. It took my little cousin to come to me and say, I know you're telling the truth because he did the same thing to me. Parents, stop saying your children are lying because what happens is you cause them to shut down and they never share when something greater happens. To me, I was just touched. But can you imagine the little girl who is being raped and molested? Because you called her a liar, she never opened her mouth. So everything went farther than it needed to go because she went to her mama and her mama said she was a liar. Mothers, stop choosing your boyfriends or your husbands over your children. God blessed you with these children to steward them well and to protect them. And you choosing a man over them is a shame before God. And maybe that's what happened to you. 
your mom chose her boyfriend over you and you were being raped by her boyfriend, whatever the case may be, break the cycle. I won't call it a curse. I would say it's a cycle. Break the cycle. When your child comes to you and say, hey, mom, such and such touched me in the wrong way. Don't tell her. Don't tell him he's lying. Investigate and kick that person out your house and out of your life. There is a movie I watched a long time ago called, called Bastard of, of Carolina. That movie always touched me in such a way because this little girl was being raped by her mother's husband. And her mother took her birth certificate, gave her to her relatives, and stayed married to him. Can you imagine what happened to that little girl when she became a woman? To know that her mother chose a rapist, a molester over her. The hurt, the pain, the trauma that my mama chose a man that was hurting me over me. Parents, I'm saying it for a reason. It is time for you to really look deep into your heart. If that is what you're doing, I'm sorry, you need help. And number two, if you can't love your children the way that God needs you to love them, give them, give them up for adoption. Allow somebody else to raise them that will love them the way that they need to be loved. But no children, no children deserve to be hurt the way that, you know, the, this young one. And whether we believe it or not, Dinah, Dana was a young girl. She wasn't even a woman yet. She was a young girl. Let's be reminded of that. And my dear brother just said his own sister was being violated by a relative. Oh, and that's another thing. Just because uncle such and such is helping you pay the bills doesn't mean that your daughter or your son should be given up to the highest bidder so those, bill, uh, so those bills could be paid. Love your children enough to protect them. Amen, Addie. And um, man, I, I see, this is the thing. And this is why um, parents need to speak up and we need to monitor and study the behavior of our children. Because children, they act funny. They act up when something is going on with them um, and they, they deem that it's not normal. Um, they will act uh, funny because I, I, I recall with my sister, when she got violated, she just started, she had behavior issues. And we're like, well, where is this behavior coming from? And she wouldn't say anything. And, and But I know she did mention it to an adult figure. And then uh, again, um, they kept silent. So there is help. And Adney, I have an a 800 number that for those who are listening to this podcast, um, that's um, maybe they've been um, victims of, of being violated by a loved one, a relative, or just anybody, uh, there is help. So um, there's a number that they could call, and it's a 24-7, they could get 24 support, and it's confidential. So it's a confidential hotline. They could call 800 800- Six five six hope h o p e uh they could call eight hundred six five six h o p e hope so that's the number the number is eight hundred six five six four six seven three so definitely call that number if you are being sexually assaulted by uh someone a, a relative or just anybody or if you've spoken to an adult and they just kept silent like Jacob. But Adney, look, I, I really enjoyed uh, this episode of the Na. It, it highlights and it captures um, the flaws of humanity. And whenever I see these events that happen between even the children, and, and if they, if whoever like listening to us and they read the whole chapter, um, the Hebrews wasn't all right either. There's some things that they did that I'm sure that God wasn't pleased with, but. It shows you, even with these characters, from Dana to Jacob to Shechem, it shows you why hum- humans, humanity, are in need of a Savior. It shows me why we need Jesus Christ more than we think. Although some people may think, oh, I don't need God. I could live without God. In fact, I am God. You know, there are people out there that think they're God. But no, we are all in need of a Savior because leave it up to us, we'll mess things up. We'll destroy things. We'll destroy each other. We'll start pick, nitpicking things that really is is not even relevant to to being a, a human, like such as 
skin color. We'll be saying, oh, my skin color is better than your skin color. Or I'm from this part of the land and you're just from this part of the land. We just start nitpicking stuff. Or my car is better than your car. Or my job is better than your car. But where's the love? What happened to love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul? And then likewise, your your neighbor, you got to love God first and love your neighbor. So I think Adney, like, these biblical characters, especially the Na, the Na name, and I think we talked about that in part one, but I did a quick Google search. Her name means justice and God judged in justice. So I think that God, that this um, awareness that we're bringing forth, Adney, about domestic violence, uh, verbal, physical, sexual, I think somebody need to be the mouthpiece for those um, that, that are um, being silenced. Any any closing remarks? I want to speak to the victims. Know that you are not alone. And like Brother Nick said, there is a number out there. If you are a little child, a little kid that is being violated, talk to a teacher, go to your principal. Do not hold this in. Because when they don't talk, they're held responsible. They really, truly are. Teachers are held responsible if a child comes to them and says that they're being abused and they don't report it. Principals are held responsible if they have a child come into their classroom and they say, hey, I'm being violated and they don't report it. So you have a way of escape. I'm speaking to the mother who doesn't love herself enough. And because she doesn't love herself enough, she's allowing any type of man to come into her life. Love Jesus. Get into a relationship with Jesus. If you don't even have, if you don't even know who Jesus is, find your local church of Christ. Sit at the feet of the minister. Sit at the feet of the minister's wife. Sit at the feet of the congregants and allow them to pour life into you and introduce you to Jesus. Because once you are introduced to Jesus, you will understand your worth and your value. And once you understand your worth and your value, you will understand the worth and the value of your children. And you will know that God gave them to you to protect and not to allow somebody to hurt them and violate them. And if you were violated, I ask you, I plead with you, seek therapy, specifically specifically trauma therapy, not talk therapy, but trauma therapy, because God loves you. And because God loves you, he has a great plan for you and he has a great plan for your children. And that's what I wanted to share. Amen. Amen. All right, world. So it was a very, very good discussion about Dana. Uh, But remember that Jesus Christ, he is the king of kings. And he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. 
So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.